Hello and welcome to this week's Women's Football Chat. My name is Chris Gadsby. I'm here every Tuesday at 6pm bringing you the very latest from focusing on the third and fourth tiers of women's football here in England. That's the FA Women's National League. Getting towards the nitty gritty now, just two weeks of the season remain and uh, there's still a lot to be decided. So without further ado, let's get straight down into it because we've got a few run-ins still to analyse uh, and I don't want this to uh, spread into a one-hour show for you this week. Let's have a look then straight at the Northern Premier Division uh, results from the past week. Huddersfield Town 2, Loughborough Lightning 2, Hull City 1, Derby County 2, Sheffield 0, AFC File 2, and West Bromwich Albion 1, Middlesbrough 1. Uh, so we'll start then at the top there. Huddersfield Town against Loughborough Lightning. Uh, goals for Huddersfield Town uh, come to uh, Katie Stanley in the 12th minute and to Maya Perry in the uh, sorry Maya Perry in the 48th minute. Uh, goals to Loughborough Lightning. Uh, only one has been uh, put on the system. That's an 88th minute goal to Natalie Taylor. Uh, Hull City 1, Derby County 2, uh, goals in this one, two goals for substitute Sophie Domingo, 53rd minute and 75th minute providing the goals for Derby County. Katie Thompson in the 57th minute had made it 1-1 to Hull before Derby got the goal 15 minutes from time. Uh, filed, beating Sheffield by two goals to nil but no information on the system from Filed as of yet. And finally, West Brom and Chalbion 1, Middlesbrough 1. Goal to West Brom coming from Hannah George, but there's no information about the Middlesbrough lineup as of yet. What that means for the table then is not a huge deal. Uh, Wolverhampton Wanderers, as we know, top of the table. Uh, Huddersfield Town and Forest have swapped places uh, with Forest not playing uh, this weekend. Uh, Loughborough Lightning against Stoke have also, sorry, Loughborough Lightning have also climbed a place against Stoke. Um, so Wolves, we already know, are champions. Hull City, we know, are relegated uh, as they are 13 points away from safety, only two games remaining. But there's still any two from four that could still go down in the Northern Premier Division. Sheffield have to win all of their remaining four games uh, to get 19 points and to tie Stoke City. They've also got to overturn 21 goal deficit. Uh, if we have a look at Sheffield's running, they've got two against Brighouse, one against Middlesbrough and one against Derby. Uh, so let's have a look at the run-ins for those sides. Uh, Loughborough currently leading those three by a point. Stoke on 19, Middlesbrough on 17. Each have got two games left to play this weekend and then next weekend. Loughborough with file to a third at home. Wolves away on the final day. Wolves, of course, the champions. Stoke, uh, they've got Hull at home, West Bromwich Albion at home, and Middlesbrough have got Sheffield away, Birmingham, uh, sorry, Burnley away. So, um, have a look at these run-ins. Six points available for these sides. Middlesbrough, of course, starting three points back from Loughborough, two points back from Stoke. Middlesbrough, the side in the relegation zone at the moment. So, if we have a look at this run in Middlesbrough against Sheffield, uh, that's taking place this weekend. And, uh, I mean, Sheffield could be down by that point um, because they've got a game in, in midweek. Uh, but Middlesbrough against Sheffield. Now, it could be, obviously, if Middlesbrough... If Sheffield were to beat Middlesbrough and Stoke were to beat Hull, would, do you fancy Stoke beating the bottom place side? I think probably you do. Um, if Stoke beat Hull and Middlesbrough lose to, to Sheffield, uh, then all it needs is a point from Loughborough, who all, do also have the better goal difference, to, to relegate Middlesbrough. So the relegation in the, in the Northern Premier Division could be sorted this weekend as well. Um, might not be. I think Sheffield going down, they've got to win and hope that Stoke don't get a point. Um, I think that's a tall order against, against Hull. Hull have only won uh, one all season. So I think it's... Uh, uh, possible that uh, Sheffield will be down come this weekend, even though they've got the games in hand. But we could see it go down to the final day 
between two or maybe even three of those sides on your screen at the moment, um, depending on what happens. My personal view is that we'll end up going into the final day of the season with Middlesbrough in the relegation zone on 20 points. Stoke uh, Loughborough then just outside, also on 20 points, and Stoke on 22 points. I think Middlesbrough and Stoke will get victories this weekend. I don't think Loughborough will. And then all three teams could still be the ones to go down on the final day of the season. You've then got uh, Middlesbrough against Burnley. Burnley are sixth. West Brom at eighth. Wolves are, of course, the champions. Um, so anything could happen there. It could even come down to goal difference uh, over these final two days. So that'll be... Uh, Interesting to look at, to say the least. Right, Southern Premier Division. We've got uh, Bridgewater United 0, Portsmouth 2, Cardiff City 1, Crawley Wasps 3, Chichester and Chelsea 3, Hounslow 0, Ipswich Town 3, London Bees 0, Southampton 6, Plymouth Argyle 1. Portsmouth then 2-0 winners over Bridgewater United, Sherelle Castle 53rd minute, Emma Jones 87th minute, providing the goals for Portsmouth to get them the three points. Cardiff City, uh, Corey Williams getting the uh, goal uh, for Cardiff. The uh, player assistant coach for Cardiff now after uh, they've had that uh, change in management. Uh, that was in the first minute, if my memory serves me rightly. Um, but then Crawley Wasps, uh, Letitia Nichols, Ellie Russell and Aisha Swaby meant that Crawley came away with the three points. Chichester and Chelsea three, Hounslow nil. Goals to Chichester and Chelsea, Gemma Simmons 22nd and 67th minute, Natasha Wilde in the 86th minute, rounding off the scoring. Ipswich Town back to winning ways against the London Bees, a 3-0 victory for Ipswich. Maria Boswell, Lucy Egan and Lucy O'Brien, the three goals for Ipswich. And another convincing win for Southampton, 6-1 over Plymouth Argyle. At uh, half-time, they were Farina up. Lucia Kendall, Sophia Farrow and Kara Alice Watling, their first half goals. Uh, followed up quickly then, Georgie Freeland, 52nd minute, and Lucia Kendall again, 65th minute, made it 5-0. Plymouth got one back on the 69th minute, Zoe Cunningham, 5-1, but then it was rounded off by Laura Rafferty uh, to make it 6-1. Uh, in the uh, in the Southern Premier Division. What it means for the table, not a great deal in terms of movement. Uh, just Portsmouth going up above uh, Gillingham. At the top, Southampton are four points clear uh, of Ipswich Town and they could seal the title before this weekend. They've got a game uh, tomorrow. Um, and if they were to win that game, they'd go seven points clear with just six available for Ipswich. Oxford technically still in the race, but would need Southampton to lose every game going in, Oxford to win every game going in and overturn a 27 goal deficit. So looking very unlikely for Oxford at the moment. And still technically three of six teams to go down out of the Southern Premier Division. But... Keensham Town are six points away from safety with two games to go and they've got to overturn a 60 goal difference. Uh, they've got Gillingham uh, away, which was postponed uh, last week. And then they've got MK Dons away on the final day. So they are not technically relegated yet. Hence, there is no R against their name. Um, but six points back and 60 goals back. Uh, is a big ask with two games to go. I mean, you're talking 15 nil victories plus Cardiff City losing 15 nil. Um, it's uh, you know very very unlikely. Chichester and Chelsea, they're three points back. They've got a 15 goal deficit to overturn, and they have got Crawley Wasps at home on the final day of the season. Um, so again, that is very unlikely. Um, but not impossible. So you're looking at the run-ins there. There's four teams there um, uh, that could all technically catch the London Bees uh, who only have one game to go. Let's have a look at the run-in then for those remaining three teams, Milton Keynes, Dons, Cardiff City and Plymouth. It's most likely to be one of those three that goes down. So this is the run-in at the top. OK, we'll start at the top first. Uh, as I said there, Southampton have got Portsmouth uh, tomorrow. 
if they win that, they have won the title. And Ipswich face Oxford this weekend. So Oxford uh, likely to be out of the running uh, this weekend unless they beat uh, Ipswich and Southampton lose to Portsmouth. To be honest, I can't see Southampton losing to Portsmouth. I think by the time we get to this weekend, we will know it's Wolves versus Southampton in the playoff match. Uh, at the bottom, then, we'll have a look at that as I planned. Uh, one of these three teams, currently it's Plymouth because they're on minus 20, Cardiff are on minus 15. But let's have a look at these fixtures because Cardiff have got Gillingham and Southampton away. Now, without wanting to put any disrespect on Hounslow, I'm pretty certain that Plymouth are going to beat Hounslow this weekend and put themselves on 27 points, lift themselves above both Cardiff and MK Dons. Uh, Cardiff... I can't see them beating Gillingham, as much as it hurts me to say it, because I used to be with Cardiff. Uh, but they could get a draw to get themselves to 25 points. The problem there is that a draw is not going to lift them above MK Dons. And I can't see Cardiff getting anything out of the game against Southampton. Maybe a draw. So, But even if you're kind and say two draws to Cardiff, that doesn't improve their goal difference. And even if they then go level on points with MK Dons, they would need MK Dons to lose on the final day by at least four goals to Keensham, who are all going to be ready, going to be down at that point. You think MK Dons would probably beat Keensham. When you're looking at that running, to me, MK Dons have got a victory, Plymouth have got a victory, Cardiff haven't, and it will see Cardiff into the uh, the bottom four. Now, Cardiff, of course, are, are two points down on what they they should be um, because of having points deducted because of COVID. Um, but then if they go down by two points anyway, it, it's not going to matter. So um, we'll see what, uh, what happens there over the course of this weekend. This weekend's going to be the crucial one because Plymouth have got Hounslow, which, as I said, I think they'll win. I can't see Cardiff beating Gillingham then. Plymouth have got their game in hand to play uh on Thursday week so it's just it's not looking good for Cardiff particularly then even if it does come down to the final day you've got Milton Keynes who have got Keensham at home well Keensham will be down by that point Plymouth have got London Bees who are in eighth at the moment now if Plymouth win this weekend they will go ninth so then you've got eighth versus ninth it's a it's a easily a game that Plymouth can get something from it's just not looking good for Cardiff at the moment um, but that's the Southern Premier Division. Uh, let's have a look at uh, then Division 1 North. Uh, Barnsley 3, Annick Town 0. Chester Street Town against Leeds United postponed. Uh, Durham Cester 3, Bradford City 1. FC United and Manchester 0. Chorley 0. Liverpool Feds 5. Norton Stockton Ancients 0. So, uh, Barnsley beating Annick by 3 goals to 0. Goals in that one. Yet to be announced uh, by Barnsley. And the game, as I said, between Chester Street Town and Leeds United postponed, which has had uh, bad ramifications for Chester Street Town, as we'll see. Uh, Durham and Sestra beating Bradford City by three goals to one. An early opener for Nicky Rose Gears, second minute for uh, Durham and Sestra, backed up by Lily Crossweight in the 21st and 50th minute to make it 3 0. Harriet Jakeman, 73rd minute, pulling it back. Uh, for Bradford, but they lost by three goals to one. Nil-nil, of course, between FC United and Manchester and Norton Stockton Ancients, but another comfortable victory for Liverpool Feds. Uh, Ellie Fletcher, 11th minute. Bethany Donoghue, 38th minute. And just before that, Demi Devereux, 34th minute. Um, Erin Slade, 60th minute. And Cara Jones, 73rd minute in the second half, coming off the substitutes bench. Erin Slade scoring the same minute she came onto the pitch uh, to make it 5-0 to Liverpool Feds. What well, means for the table, Liverpool Feds back top, Newcastle not playing. Uh, so they're back top and with a game in hand. Chester Street Town, because they didn't play, but FC United of Manchester getting that point means that it's a 10-point gap for Chester Street Town. They've only got three games to play. They're relegated out of Division 1 North. Um, Barnsley are the team now that are uh, in the relegation zone at the moment. We'll have a look at it running shortly. 
Uh, Liverpool feds at the uh, top. They are two points clear of Newcastle United uh, and they have got to three games to play. Newcastle United have two. Liverpool Feds also play midweek. They could go five points clear going into this weekend. It could all be wrapped up this weekend uh, at the top of Division 1 North. Let's have a look at these run-ins then. We're going to start at the top. As I said, Liverpool Feds have got Chorley on Thursday away from home. Chorley in fourth at the moment. That could lift Liverpool to five points clear and then all they've got to do is get a win against Leeds, who are currently in third at the weekend. Newcastle have got Anik. You fancy that they're going to win that game with Anik at the bottom of the table, having not won all season and uh, are already relegated. But when they're starting from five points back, you know, even with a win against Anik Town, that gets them to two points. If Liverpool feds were to beat Leeds, it would still be five points with a game to go. Now, if it was a draw with Leeds, it would come down to the final day. Newcastle United would go back top because their goal difference is 15 superior. So Liverpool Feds do need to win by a clear point here. Um, so a, a victory against Chorley could really help them out because it is still possible for Newcastle to take this title well within uh, their reach as well. You fancy that they're going to get three points against Anik Town. You also fancy that they're going to get three points against Barnsley. So 56, the target for uh, Newcastle. Liverpool Feds, they need to get to 57. That's five points from the last nine. So it's two wins or a win and two draws. And it all starts on Thursday for them away at Chorley. At the bottom, we brought Bradford City into this graphic now that Chester are down. Everything's kind of shifted a bit. Um, so Barnsley uh, tonight have got Stockport. Um, so that could put them uh, on to 23 points, of course. Stockport County in sixth on 24 at the moment. Uh, but this is Barnsley's game in hand as we then go into the final uh, two weeks of the season. Barnsley with Chester uh, at the weekend away from home. Chester, of course, already down. Uh, SC United Manchester not playing. That could be uh, important. And Norton Stockton Ancients uh, in seventh for Bradford, who are in eighth. But again, you look at that running and you think, OK, so Chester, you could see Barnsley getting a win against Chester. You could see Bradford getting a win against Anik. You look at the results for FC United of Manchester and you go, sorry, the fixtures to come for FC United of Manchester. And you go, well, they've got Leeds who are in third and Liverpool Feds who are top of the table at the moment. Barnsley have got Newcastle who are second. If it's down between those two sides on the last day of the season... You fancy that Bradford are going to get three points, but you, it's almost difficult to see Liverpool, uh, Liverpool Feds or Newcastle slipping up against FC United and Manchester or Barnsley. So you know, these uh, the points that these sides need, you feel they might need to get uh, before the last day. Um, it's not uh, one of these things. It's one of the things I've noticed um, in the run -in, doing the run-ins for this season is that the, the teams at the bottom all seem to be facing... Uh, you know, generally the teams at the top. There's no real one where it's between two sides and one side's got to play teams one through five and one team's playing all the other relegation sides. It, 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 always, it always seems to be relatively balanced. Um, so that's the situation at the bottom of Division 1 North. Obviously, by the time we do the show this time next week, we'll have had that Stockport game and the weekend's games. So we'll be a lot closer to knowing what the possibilities are and exactly what each team needs going into the final games of the season on the 1st of May. Uh, right, Division 1 Midlands. Um, we've got Leaford Athletic 0, Long Eaton United 0, Wemtown 2, Burton Albion 2, and Peterborough United 0, Solihull Moors 4. Uh, the 2-2 uh, draw between Wemtown and Burton Albion, an important draw, um, but not one that right really served either team particularly well. Um, Katie Doster and Laura Pennington, the two scorers for Wem Town. Uh, Burton Albion not on the uh, website yet. Solihull Moors, uh, Zoe Creaney, Annie Highway, Emily Hornsby and uh, Charlotte Leadham getting their four goals. Means for the table, we knew of course from last week, Bowl Miss St Michael's are champions now with a game to play. Solihull Moors up above Peterborough United after that uh, victory that we've just gone through. Um, so at the bottom, then, it's any two of those three sides that could go down from Division 1 Midlands. And you can see why that draw 
that's not really helped Burton Albion or Wemtown, either of them, um, because it does mean that they are four and five points back from Leafield Athletic with only two games to go. So it's going to be difficult for both of these sides now um, to uh, get out of the bottom three. So if we have a look at this running, you'll see that uh, Leafield, of course, have that game in hand that they're playing this week against Sporting Cowza, who are in eighth. Uh, but Burton and Wem, they've got uh, to know a lot of ground to make up. Now, let's have a look at uh, what stands out between these two sides. There's two things that really stand out. The first is that they've both got to play Lincoln, who are in third. And the second is that Burton have got Leafield on the final day. Now, Leafield Athletic, they've got Sporting Cowza uh, this week. They could win that uh, on the eighth. Uh, Sporting Cowza, of course, already safe. Then they've got Bolmere St. Michael's to finish uh, Bolmere's season off. So that's going to be a difficult one for Leafield as well. But then it's Burton on the final day. Now, could be, of course, that by the time that final day fixture comes around, if Burton have lost to Lincoln, uh, then Burton are down. Wemtown have got to beat Biddeth. And this is providing that Leafield haven't got something from the Sporting Cows game as well. Because... If Leafield even get a draw against Sporting Cowser and Wemtown beat bit of, it's still a three-point gap, but that goal difference is still going to be around 10 there or thereabouts. So it's still going to be a tough ask for Wemtown to go away to Lincoln and win by like seven or eight goals and hope that Burton Albion win like 4-0 to overturn Leafield Athletic. So Leafield Athletic you know, are very much in the driving seat and they could, of course, with a win against Sporting Cowser on Thursday, relegate both of those two sides before the weekend, Burton and Wemtown. So it's very nearing its conclusion here. Um, Wemtown five points back. They've only got six on the table. They have to win both of those games to stand a chance and hope Leafield lose all of their three. I mean, I think looking at looking at the run-ins and looking at the points back margins, I think it's going to be Burton and Wemtown. I just can't see them taking three points away from Lincoln and a draw might do it. Uh, for Burton, but you are still, again, relying on heavy defeats to Leafield Athletic, to Sporting and Boldmere before putting it in your own hands on the bank holiday, the May bank holiday. So it's uh, going to be an interesting one. It really is. Um, but I think it's going to be Wemtown and Burton that go down. Right, Division 1 South East then. Uh, not a huge amount to uh, discuss uh, in the South East. Harlow Town 1, Kent Football United 2. Uh, goals to Kent Football United. Priscilla Martins, 14th and 37th minute. Harlow Town without uh, the information on the website yet. Norwich City 1-0 up over AFC Wimbledon. Ellie Smith with the only goal of the game. And Stevenage 2, Queen's Park Rangers 2. Early goal for Queen's Park Rangers. Broken Moore in the 7th minute. Uh, Jody Bellinger and Holly Greenwood getting the goals for Stevenage before a 93rd minute goal to Katie Ackerman for Queen's Park Rangers made it finish 2-2. Here's the table then. So Billericay Town still waiting to uh, see if they can pip hashtag United uh, to the title with their final game. Queen's Park Rangers go above Actonians. Norwich City with their victory over AFC Wimbledon have secured their safety. They are four points clear of the relegation zone, five points clear of Enfield Town, the only side that can get out of there now. So it's all between Cambridge City and Enfield Town at the bottom of Division 1 South East. Enfield Town with Kent Football United on the final day. Cambridge City, though, could make that an irrelevant game if they are to beat Cambridge United this weekend in the Cambridge Derby. It's the only game in South East this weekend. Um, and if uh, they are able to win that game, they'll move to 26 points. They will climb a couple of places, but it will relegate Enfield Town before the last game of the season. Of course, a defeat for Cambridge City this weekend away at Cambridge United leaves the door open potentially for Enfield Town on the final day of the season. Cambridge City with Actonians, who are currently in fifth on the last day, and that will make it uh, extremely exciting if it does come down to it, because if you look at Enfield's goal difference as well, it's better than Cambridge City's. So a win for Enfield Town and two defeats for Cambridge City, or even a defeat and a draw for Cambridge City, will... Uh, 
being Enfield Town stay up. Um, Cambridge City then a draw this weekend against Cambridge United isn't enough to secure safety and they could go down on the final day. We'll have to see what happens with that one. Finally then, Division 1 South West, Cheltenham Town 3, Chesham United 1, Exeter City 5, AFC Bournemouth 0 and Port Z 0, Southampton Women 2. Uh, goals for Cheltenham Town then, 2 for Lacey J Liggett, 22nd and 27th minute. Uh, and one for Rian Robbins in the 77th minute. There's no information about the Chesham scorers. Exeter City, a 5-0 victory over AFC Bournemouth. Uh, two goals for Connie Pengeli, 8th and 44th minute. Uh, Sarah Stacey, 24th and 57th minute. And Molly Taylor in the 80th minute, making it 5-0. I mean, these were the fixtures, don't forget. It went down to the final games for these sides. Bournemouth needing to win and hope that Cheltenham lose. Uh, but then at half-time with Cheltenham 2-0 up and Bournemouth 3-0 down, it was pretty clear which way the uh, title was going. Uh, the only other game this weekend, Southampton women winning 2-0 away at Portishead. Uh, two goals for Brittany Geel, 53rd and 75th minute. Uh, mean, meant that Southampton women won by two goals to nil. Division 1 South West then is all finished in terms of the uh, table and the significant placings. Cheltenham Town Winners by five points over AFC Bournemouth. Uh, Exeter City in third. They could get overtaken by Southampton women, though, of course. Uh, and in fact, AFC Bournemouth could if uh, Southampton women win big in their final few games. Pull town towards the bottom of the table. They're relegated as they were a few weeks ago. Um, so that's uh, Cheltenham into uh, the Southern Premier Division next season. Uh, we wait to uh, see, of course, whether it's Hashtag United or Billericay Town who will join them. Let's have a look then at the fixtures coming up this uh, weekend. We've been through some of them already towards the top and the bottom of the tables. Uh, but in the north on Thursday, Brickhouse Town take on Sheffield. So Sheffield, as I said, without a victory in that game would be down before we get to the weekend. Then at the weekend, Brighouse Town against Wolverhampton Wanderers, Loughborough Lightning against AFC Fylde, Sheffield versus Middlesbrough in what could be a crucial game if Sheffield are to beat Brighouse on Thursday, Stoke City against Hull City and West Bromwich Albion against Burnley. In the South, only four games on Wednesday. So tomorrow, as I said, Southampton against Portsmouth. Southampton with a chance to wrap the title up at home. Uh, Gillingham against Cardiff City. Ipswich Town against Oxford and Plymouth against Hounslow. So important games at the top and the bottom this week. Southampton could win the league. Uh, Ipswich and Oxford are going to battle it out to see who's going to get second in the league. Plymouth could get those crucial three points to lift themselves out of the relegation zone. And Cardiff really do need to win that game against Gillingham. Division 1 Midlands game on Thursday. Leaford Athletic against Sporting Cowser. That game, of course, Leaford Athletic, if they were to win that, relegate both Burton Albion and Lincoln and uh, Wem Town. Wem Town away at Biddeth United and Burton Albion home to Lincoln City at the weekend. Leafville Athletic against Boldmere St Michael's as well. Leek Town against Sporting Cowser, the one other fixture. So Wem Town, the only side out of those three that are still battling to avoid the drop away from home this weekend. Division 1 North, it's a busy week. There's uh, been quite a few postponements throughout the course of the season. Some teams still with four games to play. There's only two weeks of the season remaining. Tonight, Barnsley against Stockport County. Could be a really important win that for Barnsley. Tomorrow, Anik Town against Durham Sestra. Thursday, Chorley against Liverpool Feds. Liverpool Feds with the opportunity to put themselves in a commanding position as we've discussed already on this show. Anik Town against Newcastle, Bradford against Norton Stockton Ancients, Chester Street Town take on Barnsley, Durham Sestra against Chorley and Liverpool Feds against Leeds United on Sunday. So a very important week for Barnsley. They could you know, lift themselves to 26 points. There's the potential that Barnsley lift themselves as high as sixth in the course of this week and really put themselves out of the relegation picture if they were to beat Stockport and Chester Street Town, which are two winnable games for Barnsley. Right, Division 1 South East, we've mentioned it already, just the one game this weekend is the Cambridge Derby. United against City, a win for Cambridge City, mean that Enfield Town uh, will be relegated and we will know all the four sides down from Division 1 South East. Anything other 
than a win for Cambridge City and it will go down to the final day. And finally, Division 1 South West, uh, Pool Town against Southampton Women uh, tonight as well. Then two at the weekend, Exeter against Chesham and Southampton Women against Larkhall Athletic. Of course, Exeter and Southampton both want to uh, try and get themselves as high up the table as possible. Exeter can only reach third. Southampton Women could, with winning all three of their games with uh, decent margins, uh, they would have to overturn, what, a 13-goal deficit. So you would need uh, you know, a few 5 nils, 4 nils in there. Um, could get as high as second, uh, but third is probably more realistic. Um, although they are playing the, two bottom, the bottom two sides this week um, and then finish with a game against Exeter. So anything is possible. Uh, but Southampton women and Exeter really battling for third position. Right, one more thing to talk about before this week's show finishes. And it's these, the final of the FA Women's National League Cup and Plate competitions being played at Solihull Moors uh, this Sunday. We've got uh, the Plate first at 11am. FC Wimbledon drawn us the home side from Division 1 South East against Nottingham Forest in the Northern Premier Division. Uh, and then at three o'clock, it's Southampton against Huddersfield Town, uh, top of the uh, Southern Premier Division against fourth in the uh, Northern Premier Division. Uh, both of those games taking place on the same day at Solihull Moors. The plate at 11 and the cup at three o'clock will have the, uh, we'll know who wins this time around. If I had to put money on it, um, I would say Southampton and Forest. Uh, AFC Wimbledon, we know, are, are a, a strong side. They've been a strong side in Division 1 South East, but I think Forest uh, will just have too much for them. And I think Southampton, on such a good run of form at the moment, uh, will have too much for Huddersfield. I mean, if we look at Southampton's run of form, uh, when was the last time Southampton lost a game? Uh, you've got to go right the way back unless I've missed one, to the end of November when they lost to Ipswich. So I think Southampton and Forest will be our uh, cup and plate winners this year. Um, but that will about do it for this week's women's football chat. A uh, bit of a shorter one and uh, not quite right in the throat still. Um, so apologies for uh, for that as well. But uh, Thank you very much for joining me this week for the Women's Football Chat. We'll be back uh, next Tuesday, maybe next Wednesday, um, actually, because I'm working on Tuesday. But we'll see uh, see if I can still get something recorded uh, before 6pm to go out. Um, but, yeah, thank you very much for joining me on this week's Women's Football Chat. As always, keep supporting your local women's football team. Their season's nearing the end and they really need you to cheer them on. I'll be back next Tuesday at 6pm with all the very latest in those relegation and title battles. Thank you very much for watching and goodbye.